It seems that Castle loves snakes, because today I am pleased to announce the Cobra 10. I had to look at it. <laughs> and like, ooh, which one? So the Cobra 10, it's not exactly new news, but I was part of the beta program, and now I would like to talk about some of my findings, what they did to improve it, and what this thing is all about. So the Cobra 10 is more or less a 32-bit version of the Mamba X. It's more or less the same size. It has the cooling fan built in. It has a CNC aluminum case. We've got our auxiliary wire on here for things like drag brake on the fly or other programmable items. But this one is built on 32-bit technology. It, it has a much faster sampling rate and it has a lot of the features that you know to be castle specific. The cryo drive is still in there and will do a startup and you can kind of hear. It sounds a little different this time. And I haven't gotten all of the nitty gritty details about how it switches because Castle, they kind of keep a little bit of that close to the vest. It's sort of a dark art to switch MOSFETs most efficiently. But I will say the sound is a little bit different here. Uh, let's see, what other features could we talk about? It's waterproof, um, censored, it also is sensorless. Let's just, let's just scroll down here. Oh yeah, it has the hill hold feature, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, it is also tunable via Castle Link version 2 only, because it's 32-bit. Now, you can use the Castle Link itself from version 2 to version 4, but the version 4 Castle Link, which comes in the box with it, it's going to be the fastest. So just be aware of that. If you've got old Castle Links, yes, it'll work as long as it's version two or above, but it will be very slow, especially for the data logging, the downloading of data logging. Uh, so just something to be aware of. If you're using the Cobra 10s in either 32-bit, I would recommend that you use the Castle Link version four chip on there. And you may as well just use the Castle Link version two for everything moving forwards. Why not? It seems to be a really nice interface. It's a little different than the old one. The window actually can maximize and not like cut things off, which is kind of neat. So yeah, uh, what other features here? Adjustable input. Uh, you got 2S to 6S input. You also can set your internal BEC from, I believe it is six to eight, no, five to eight on there. Um, that's, that's the big stuff right here. That's the big stuff. So let's go ahead and plug it in. You'll hear the startup sound. This is with an in runner. This is the Polar Pros. Really good match. Not super loud on that because we're running an in runner right now. So I've already got it programmed essentially for crawling. I did the throttle curves that I normally do. We'll probably do a, a video just on programming it because it is a little bit different. But it's got the normal uh, castle startup sound, a little ooey. I'll get close to it here. With an in runner, you can hardly hear it. So this is in kind of our startup mode. We'll, we'll blast past that. So there is some switching noise. There we go. So now we got past the startup. And it does stall, so we don't have an RPM loop on this controller, even with a censored motor. But as compared to previous versions, the restart after a stall, I'm not sure if the camera will quite pick that up, is really smooth. And as it loads down, it's keeping excellent sync. Of course, this is a censored motor again, but you'll hear when, when it switches right there, from the startup mode to the normal operation. And of course this is unloaded, so it's, you know, you're gonna have more RPM variation since there's not an RP, uh, uh, there's not an RPM lock. I kinda like the, I kinda like the UFO sound. And once you get into an RPM range that's above the startup, it gets very quiet. And now we've got pretty much commutation frequencies that you can hear standard castle controller all right so there is the hill hold mode which you can select in your programming and it makes it where the shaft doesn't just free roll you can set your level of it so it's got i think like five levels or six levels i'd have to have it in front of me to remember and i believe i have it on medium right now and the adjustment is something that they actually didn't have in beta and they put it into their major release when they release these and that's a really good thing because it scales with the voltage so the higher the voltage that i'm running the more amps that it pulls 
on something like an 1800 revolver, the hill hold mode. Um, and, and I can tell that it, it basically just throws voltage in between two of the phase, uh, two of the phase wires. And it's sort of like a, a dumb hill hold in a sense. So even in censored mode, it doesn't know where the motor is, but it's injecting some voltage into that, the two phases. On an 1800 revolver, I think a normal 540 size, it was about 0.35 amps on three cell lipo and 0.5 amps, half of an amp on four cell lipo. Uh, so that is why you would potentially want to adjust that because it does inject heat into your system because it's just sitting there. It's just burning some amps all the time and amps equals heat. So just something to be aware of. Now, when you're using a sensored motor, if the sensored motors have an RTD sensor, a temperature sensor in there, it will actually roll back the hill hold if the motor is too hot. So they really thought of everything they could on these. And although I would like to see, at least with sensored motors, something that was a little smarter, something that would know, hey, my motor is in this exact position and we're gonna use that to hold. And if we're not off of that position, we're not burning the hold brake. I mean, that'd be an ideal situation in my mind. Uh, they have done what pretty much every manufacturer in the world has done for hill hold, and they're just injecting a dumb. And I'm not saying that the feature itself is dumb. I'm saying that it, it gets no feedback from where the motor actually is. So in that sense, it's, you know, it's blind. It, it's dumb about how it injects it. So just something to be aware of on how it works and that it will always inject heat and your motor will always run hotter when you're running a hill hold on this. Now, when you're using the adjustable drag brake on the auxiliary, as soon as you get out of 100% drag brake, the hill hold will also turn off. So they have that in there and you can use that to your advantage so you can actually change it on the fly with a third channel control. So run it at like, let's say 99% uh, all the time when you don't want hill hold. And then when you do want hill hold, pop it up to 100% hill hold pops back on and you're not gonna get any free coasting as long as you have it set strong enough. And then you're also not gonna get general heat buildup unless you want it to hold on the hill. Uh, the adjustable drag brake on the fly is really nice. You can get onto a hill, then kind of uh, roll it down a little bit and it will let your rig slide down. And then when you want it to stop, you just go right back up and we are good to go. So for a crawler, this is gonna be your standard castle efficiency, your standard castle power, and it also is gonna have your standard castle noise, especially when you're using an outrunner. In runner like this, not really a lot of noise. Your, your gear mesh and everything is gonna make a lot more noise, except for the very startup. I mean, once it's bolted into a rig, you're gonna hear it very slightly. Crisp throttle resolution. And from what I can tell and what I've tested, it has extremely good low speed control that you would expect from Castle. Now, I have heard reports that the Mamba X still has a little bit better low speed control for crawlers, especially with larger motors, uh, lower KV motors. And that's something that I have not been able to experience yet myself, but in the future, if I can get enough combinations and wheeling time, maybe we'll be able to find that. But, you know, just some reports that I've heard and that is not something that I've personally experienced, but I'd like to send that along for you to know. All right, now we're gonna try a revolver. This is an 1800 KV 540M. This is, in my opinion, the perfect size of motor for a crawler. So we're gonna boot it up and you're gonna hear it's, it's gonna be louder than the end runner. And that's just how the out, the outrunner is a very effective speaker. And there's a lot more rotor area and the entire bell vibrates. So, I kind of like the new startup sound. It's still essentially the castle startup sound, but it's kind of like, it's, it's got a crispness to it. A little oomph, if you will, that I really like. So the hill hold mode is turned on. It feels essentially like our motor is shorted down. I don't have it turned up very much, uh, but it, it is definitely keeping our motor from spinning at low RPMs before a normal drag brake would kick in. Uh, with the outrunners especially, you have to be careful about how high you're turning your hill hold up because there is not the temperature sensor feedback on it. So it doesn't know to throttle back or to remove the hold if your motor's overheating. And also for any given KV and size of motor, you're gonna have a much lower resistance. So your hill hold is gonna pull more amps on a, something like a revolver than it is an end runner of the same sort of heft. Uh, so this has a 16 millimeter long stator, a normal 540, 
in runner is going to have a 15 millimeter long stator so kv for kv the revolver is going to pull more in hill hold mode and it's going to have a lot more hill hold too you may even you, you may not even need to use hill hold with something like a revolver but you can't hear this but it, it is obvious that it is powering one phase in hill hold it kind of, it's kind of skipping through and, and maybe you can see on camera it, it goes chunk 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 so it's um kind of like every other position is where the hill hold is enabled so i'm going to try to not hurt myself spinning this up spinning up outrunners in your hand is never a good idea but you'll be able to hear this castle startup that is very typical it's a lot louder with outrunners but it's got really good authority on startup it just goes it's not like some of the older ones where it kind of like we 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 tries to start it up it either does or it doesn't of course i can get it locked into a position to where it, it also will stick give it a little bit more throttle and it gets really loud for a second and then boom you you heard it kick in to the non-startup and what i am imagining is that they've got a dithered mode in their startup rpm range so you actually have to reduce the frequency that you're switching and a reduced frequency on this is going to be somewhere between like i would estimate 8 and 13k from what i'm hearing which is right smack in the middle of where these like to reverberate and where your ear is very sensitive and then once we get out of that initial startup range and we get our pwm high enough it pops up we get a little less on the ears which is probably going to be like 20 to 24k switching frequency and then the rest of what we hear is going to be commutation frequency so far far quieter than other castle controllers it's still going to make a lot of noise but as you can hear it's not like some of the old ones you've seen me on videos where it's you know on the bench ear piercing absolutely ear piercing uh, we also do have what I would consider an, woo -wee, an active drag. Yeah, there's a couple of frequencies in there that start to ring. So if I decrease my, my throttle here, the RPM of the motor comes right down with it. And that's nothing new for Castle controllers. They've been like that since the Mamba X was released. Synchronous rectification is one thing to call it. You could also, yeah, and then it goes back down here. You, you could probably hear that switch. It goes back down into our startup mode. And there's a little bit of an RPM gap there. When you shear loaded down, you're probably not going to notice that. But unloaded, you can hear. There's nothing in between as far as my ability to modulate. And in a crawler, you, you may notice that. In a normal vehicle, a basher, etc., you're not going to notice it. Let's hear that startup, or, or the, uh, the, the arming once more. I just kind of like the, the crispness of this. Yes, so the new Cobra 10 from Castle. If you know Castle's general vibe and how they act, this one's going to be not much different. Although that little space in between the startup frequency and the normal operating frequency, you, you may notice that in a crawler. Um, honestly, I've gone to other controllers for my outrunners just because they tend to be a little bit more quiet and they have that RPM lock at low RPMs. So... It's not something you're probably going to see me crawling with much, but we will definitely go out on the rocks and I will show you how it performs in our next video. If you want to see it installed in anything particular that I've got, let me know. I'm probably going to throw it into something like a Vanquish rig. Um, I'm not sure which. Or the Element Enduro. That's always a great one. So, yeah, we'll, we'll just do that. If you do have any questions about the Cobra 10, put your comments down below. We'll do our best to get to them. And in the meantime, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. You've made it to the end of the video. Hopefully that means you liked what you saw. If you want to help out the channel, you can like, subscribe, and definitely comment down below. We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel.